very warm welcome to all the participants in today's webinar. This is our 43rd webinar in our talk series. A special welcome to speaker Shri Ishwaranji for making the time to be with us here today. Before we introduce our speaker today, and for all those who were not there earlier and have joined us today, Ritambara Wellness is a collective of like-minded individuals that look at wellness in a holistic way, not just the body, but the mind as well all through the practice and knowledge of ancient wisdom that comes from our scriptures and heritage. We conduct corporate programs and retreats for wellness that looks at personal transformation and tapping into oneself to unlock our infinite potential. Presently, we are conducting these programs virtually and all our virtual corporate programs are uploaded on our website with ambrawellness.com. We also conduct webinars regularly on topics that, de that delve into self-discovery personal transformation, health, harmony, holistic well-being, as well as the arts that help us connect with our higher selves. All our earlier talks are uploaded on uh, YouTube under Ritambra Wellness. If you would like to be a part of our community, the details are posted in the chat function. Alternately, please post your contact details, cell number, email ID, so that we will add you in our groups. So let's get on with today's program. Shri Ishwaranji will be talking to us on principle and practice of Karma Yoga. And today's session will have 45 minutes of talk followed by 15 minutes of question and answer. A request to all the participants to please stay muted and keep your videos on. Please feel free to post your questions on the chat function below and Ishwaranji will be answering them in the realm of well-being. I feel privileged to introduce our speaker today, Shri Ishwaranji. Ishwaranji, Namaste. Shri Ishwaranji, is a senior disciple and patronage of the internationally eminent philosopher Swami uh, Parthaswati. He has been studying, researching and propagating Vedanta for over 25 years under Swamiji's guidance. Sri Ishwaran Ji is the founder of Vedanta Institute of Bangalore. Once again, welcome Sri Ishwaran Ji, over to you. Are you? Are you? We have this 45 minutes to study on what is the principle and how you can practice Karma Yoga. First, the word Yoga means to join. To join with the higher, with the divine, with God, with Self. Your effort to get back to the Self is known as yoga in Sanskrit. Now that effort can be using your action, that effort can be using your emotions, that effort can be using your thinking. So when you are employing your actions to get back to the self, that effort is called as karma yoga. When you use your emotions to get back to the self, that's called Bhakti Yoga. You use your thinking to get back to the self that is known as Jnana Yoga. So this is the three basic spiritual disciplines we have. So in of the three, we are going to be concentrating today on Karma Yoga. If we have the subsequent sessions, I would prefer to continue this to study the next session about bhakti, then about jnana. What is this bhakti yoga? What is jnana yoga? That we can see later. But yoga means anything that you do. Then karma yoga means employment of action. Using action to get back to self. That is called karma yoga in a simple manner. Now comes the little detail we go into who is supposed to be employing action, who is supposed to be employing emotion, who is supposed to be employing thinking. Now remember, every human is a combination of active, emotional and intellectual personality. There is no human in the world who is exclusively active, exclusively emotional, exclusively intellectual. No. We are all combination. 
the difference in all of us is only because of the difference in the proportion it's like all coffee is made up of decoction sugar milk but no two coffee is the same all different 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 like that it is so since we are all combination of all the three personalities remember we have to employ this karma bhakti jnanam together simultaneously you have to practice karma yoga bhakti yoga and jnana yoga now uh, there are lot of people who keep asking this question which yoga is superior is karma superior bhakti superior jnana superior every one of them claim karma is superior those who follow karma those who follow bhakti they say ultimate is bhakti and jnana yoga fellow is standing in the corner and he is laughing at these two fellows and say hey both are useless man jnana is the highest he says now please please understand you cannot be practicing them it has to be done together because you are a combination of active emotional and intellectual personality so don't get into the debate don't get into this you know the discussion of which yoga is better you know there is no such thing because which is better can be answered with reference to whom to whom that is better unless you answer that question to an emotional person bhakti is better to an intellectual person jnana is better to an active person karma is better that's about it that doesn't mean i am active doesn't mean i am 100% active i am predominantly active but i am also having emotion i am also having intellectual aspect in me to that extent i have to practice karma to that extent bhakti to that extent jnana so don't get into this false notion that which yoga is superior first point now coming to this karma yoga now spiritual effort what we are doing is we are trying to remove what is separating us from the self what is dividing what is standing between you and god remove that obstruction remove that you merge with god union happens so all your efforts is only in that dimension please your effort is only to get back get back in the sense what is obstructing me today now what is obstructing all of us is generally referred as desires karma the desire is an obstruction man minus desires equals god god plus desires equals human this is the equation now in this spiritual effort what we are doing we are trying to knock off the desires which is obstructing our path our recognition of the self so the effort is to remove the desires now from where the desires come about how the desires work in us see the 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 board all of you able to see think there right the chronology of action is vasana becomes thought at the intellect becomes a desire at the level of mind and expresses as action at the level of the body which produces the result this is the chronology of action remember any time you discuss about action immediately you got to remember this in mind vasana thought desire action every action is preceded by a desire every desire is preceded by a thought every thought is preceded by vasana vasana is means fragrance condensed fragrance that's called a vasana or ignorance 
Now, I can't go into the detailed explanation of what is Vasana. Vasana is the stuff that you are made up of. That's why you have the example. The seed of your personality is Vasana. The seed expresses as sapling, then becomes a plant, becomes a tree, produces the fruit. Same way, the Vasana in you becomes a thought at the level of the intellect, further feed, fed, further entertained, becomes a desire, unintelligent entertainment of the thought becomes a desire, indiscriminate appreciation of things becomes a desire at the level of mind. That desire, you can't keep quiet, you have to perform action. It will express, you will start moving in the direction. That is called action. That action produces the result. The result can be two things. Remember, anytime we discuss about a result, we are talking about two things. The first one is the perceptible result, success or failure that you see in the world. Second one is the imperceptible effect, which is whether your desires are further getting strengthened by your action or it is getting weaker by your action. So there are two consequences to every action. One is the external consequence. External consequence is what we see in the world. And the internal consequence. Internal consequence is what is happening to you as a person. What happens to you as a person is either your desires are increasing day by day or your desires are decreasing day by day. It's exactly like every day, this economist they say, either you are becoming richer day by day or you are becoming poorer day by day. There is no static positioning of yours financially. This economist they say, because of inflation, etc., etc., all those things. Now, either you are becoming richer or you are becoming poorer every day. Similarly, either you are increasing your desires or you are decreasing your desires. That increase of desires and the decrease of desires happens because of the way in which you are performing the action. If you perform action in one manner, your desires will increase. You perform action in another manner, your desires will decrease. This has got nothing to do with external success or failure. Remember that. Okay. Now, karma yoga means I perform action in the world in such a way that I don't compromise my success in the world. At the same time, I reduce my desires also. This technique of action is called karma yoga. I have to act. That's what Krishna says in the Gita. Nahikas chik shanamabhi jatu tushtatya karma krita. You cannot be without action even for a split second. Why? So much of desires you have. More the desire you have, more you will be performing action. Less the desires you have, less action. No desire, no action. Now whenever they say no action. That's what in the Gita he says, actionlessness. When he says actionlessness, what do you have to understand? Does it mean you'll be sitting idle? Immediately everybody thought, oh, spiritual perfection is, Krishna only said, no, actionlessness. Therefore, perfection is what? Not doing anything. That is why the chronology of action is very important. When he says actionlessness, what you need to understand? It is desirelessness. Desirelessness means Thoughtlessness. Thoughtlessness means vasanalessness. His ability to reach to that state of vasanalessness is what is referred, stated as actionlessness. Doesn't mean you sit idle, please. Because that's why immediately Krishna comes and corrects that with misunderstanding. He says, you can't be without action, man. You have to act. But then 
human beings were given a choice of action, which is not available for other creatures. What is the choice? See, the cow cannot decide on what to eat today. Today is Ekadeshi. Let me fast one day. It cannot. If the cow is hungry, it will eat. If the tiger is hungry, it will eat. If it is not hungry, it will not eat. You can't force. Only a human is capable of eating, even when he is not hungry. That's what all of us do now. It is time to finish your dinner. Finish it. Why? Midnight you will feel hungry otherwise. Therefore, 8.30, now, have dinner. You have to have your di di dinner. This is what we consider, we, we live. Now, animals don't live life like that. Animals live life in a beaten path. They don't have a choice. Like he says, a tiger cannot turn vegetarian, nor a cow, a meat eater. It is not possible. They don't, they cannot. Whereas a human has a choice. You use your capacity to make choices. You execute actions, execute choices in a particular way to reduce your desires. It is called Karma Yoga. You execute choices in a particular way to increase your desires is called a materialistic person. He is a sensual person. He is a worldly person. A spiritual man is one who uses the choices to reduce his desires, indiscriminate thoughts, vasanas. This is the method of it. Now, Karma Yoga works on what principles? Now, for which? We have to understand how actions are executed by us. Now remember, action is executed by the body. No action can be done without body. Right. Now, this action, what I have to do, can be propelled by either the mind or the intellect. Your discriminating power, your ability to think and reason, analyze is called intellect. Mind is collection of your desires, likes and dislikes. That is your mind. So your action that you are performing, every action of yours can be driven either by a like of the mind or a dislike of a mind or by the conception or the conviction of the intellect. When mind drives action, it is on likes and dis dislikes. I like something, do it. I don't like something, I don't do it. As simple as that. Mind operates only on the principle of which is convenient, which is not convenient. Anything convenient for me, I will do. Anything that is not convenient for me, I will not do. Simple equation of the mind. Now the problem is what? When you perform actions like that, every time you do that action, the desire to perform that action keeps increasing more and more. For example, person picks up a cigarette and smokes. He's smoking. When he is smoking the cigarette, the desire in, in, in him, that liking for that smoking, is forcing him to do that action. And more and more he keeps going along with that like to smoke, like to smoke, like to smoke, like to smoke, becomes a habit, we say. Isn't it? Meaning what? He is compelled to smoke. He has no choice now. Now he can't make a choice. Should I smoke or not? No. He is forced. He is sitting in a critical meeting in the office. 
suddenly one thought of cigarette comes in his mind is enough for him to get out of the meeting, go and take two puffs quickly and come back. Now he can't dismiss and say, hey, keep it aside man, I will do it later. He can't say that now. Which choice he had about two years back. Two years back also he was smoking. But at that time, if there is an important meeting, what he used to do? That he would say, I'll take, take later. After the meeting, I will go and smoke. He can postpone it. He can drag. He, he had a choice not to go along with it. But over a period of time, what had happened? He is compelled to do it. Now, in a day, you are performing actions from morning till night. How many actions were performed by you by the sheer force or sheer compulsion of your mind? Is a we? How many of them were done out of intellectual re re reasoning? Out of conviction? Out of a higher ideal? An action is executed not for a like or a dislike. You see, as you know, the simple things we do in life also, you know, at home, whatever you are doing, you finish coffee and leave the cup and walk out is very easy. The rest, to take the cup and put it in the sink, you don't have to wash it, just put it there. No, how many times the wife has to say that? Uh, and you get irritated. You say, why? It is inconvenient. What? You know, it, to drink coffee and leave it there is much easier. Very comfortable that is. Whereas, to finish that coffee, go there, and that doesn't mean just because you go and leave it in the sink, you are a highly evolved soul, please. Okay, this is our problem. Any example I give, you know, people immediately, they say, oh, I'm doing it, therefore what? You are next to Ramana Magarishi. They say, tomorrow morning you are going to become Ramana Magarishi. You know, like that they behave. From simple things like this to your most profound decisions that you have taken in life. Hmm? Is it propelled by your desire, likes and dislikes, or a higher vision, a higher ideal? Remember, for you to perform karma yoga, fundamental requirement is you must have a higher vision in life. That's a basic one. Just because you have a higher vision doesn't mean you are performing. It is like you complete the entrance exam. You have completed the foundation course to do CA. You have completed and you have joined CA. Now, if you have not done the foundation course, you can't even join CA. Like that, you have to complete CAT exam for you to join IAM. Now, if you don't even pass there, where, you, where, where is the chance? You, similarly, for you to say that I'm going to practice Karma Yoga, that can be done only if you have a higher vision. So long as you are not having a higher vision, this Karma Yoga is not existing in your life. You know? Now, higher vision comes to you means for what you are working, every action of yours, who is the benefactor? Who gets the benefit of that action? Where is your focus? Is the benefit what I am going to get out of it? Or what is that I am going to contribute through this action? That is called a higher. Higher ideal means who is the benefactor? The benefactor can be only me. That's the lowest state. Slightly better than that is to say that who is my family? My family means my immediate family. Me, my wife, my child. If you are very great personality, you will say my parents also. That's all. Your whole effort 
benefit is enjoyed only by whom? Only this group. Then you can go slightly above that and say, my community. Then you can go slightly up and say, my country. Then you can go slightly up and say, humanity. The highest is to say that I am working for the entire universe. Now you got to figure out where you are able to identify. Where is your ideal? Every action that you are performing, you got to ask yourself, what, for whom are you working? You see, what attitude you have, that is called Karma Yoga. First requirement in Karma Yoga is what generally we call as unselfish ideal. When you have an unselfish ideal, selfishness is what is in it for me. Unselfishness is in what way I can be of some value addition to you in life. That is called unselfishness. Selfishness, taking. Focuses on taking. Unselfishness focuses on giving. Selfishness, consumer attitude. Unselfishness, contributor attitude. Selfishness means what, sir? Rights. Wherever you talk about your right, you are selfish. Wherever you talk about duty, you are unselfish. You start Karma Yoga effort starts from conceiving an unselfish ideal in your life. And then take it right up to selflessness. So Karma Yoga begins from unselfishness and takes you right up to selflessness. Unself selfish focuses on me. Unselfish focuses on you. Selfless is focuses on the self. Every action is executed with the ideal of self-realization. That is called a selfless action. Selfish action means every action is performed for the advantage of my body, my mind, my intellect. Me. That is selfish. Unselfish is contributing to the welfare of your body, your mind, your intellect. Whoever that you is. That you can be family, that you can be community, that you can be country, that you can be entire humanity. All this. Now selfless is neither you nor me. Very difficult to understand. So, you say first, forget about selflessness. First, start developing an unselfishness wherever you are. Suppose if you are already working at the level of community, start moving from community to country. If you are working at the family, at least start working for community. But that doesn't mean, you know, immediately I say all of you should start one NGO, you know, start one social service, you know, that's not what I meant. You see, it is not necessary that you have to do all those things. Every action of yours, your focus has to shift from taking to giving. That's called Karma Yoga, for which you need an idol. How do you start, sir? How, how am I to start the practice of Karma Yoga? This, through this, higher ideal first. Then comes the technique. The technique of the principle of Karma Yoga. The technique of right action is given by Krishna. Beautiful explanation. Now, in fact, if you have to come, if you want to have a complete understanding of Karma Yoga, right? You have to study 
chapter 3 and chapter 4 of Bhagavad Gita. You have to study both the chapters. You see? So only after the study of these two chapters, you get you get a grip on the concept of Karma Yoga. You know, in 45 minutes, it's impossible. But at least you can give some idea. Some, you know, I can trigger some interest in you people to pick up and study. You don't. See, that's the effort here. So you can't cover all the aspects. But main concept is this. And there, in the third chapter of the Gita, verse 30, he gives the technique of right action. Definition for Karma Yoga, you want. So how am I to practice Karma Yoga? Now people, everybody talks about, you know, Karma, Neva, Adhikaraste and all that. That is not, you can't practice it. You see, that's not for your practice. What you have to practice is verse 30 of chapter 3 of the Bhagavad Gita. Mai Sarvani Karmani Sanyasya Atmati Atma Chetasa Irashir Nirmamo Bhutva Yudhyasva Vikadachwara Six points he gives in that. In that one verse, he gives six points for you to practice Karma Yoga. The practice of Karma Yoga is broadly classified into two categories. Karma Yoga, I said, using action. When you are performing action, the action you perform, two aspects it carries, he says, there. First dimension is, you should conserve that energy. You should not dissipate energy in unproductive channel and generate energy. See, we do two types of action in life. One, to conserve energy. Another one is to generate energy. Now, he gives three points for both. There are three areas he gives where your energy is getting dissipated unnecessarily. So he says, plug those three things first. Then, do another three things, ensure that you have the other three things also, so that you can generate more energy. It's like you're going to fill the overhead tank for you to get water into your tap. But if your overhead tank has three leakage points, whatever you are generating will get wasted. So Krishna says first what you have to do sir, plug that channels first. He says there are three channels through which your mental energy, your thought energy is getting wasted. Three areas he gives. One with reference to the past worries. Two with reference to the anxiety for future. Three, the present excitement. That excitement of the present, you lose your energy. You lose your focus, you lose concentration. Or you are worried about what happened in the past. Like we see that with a lot of people. You know, the students, you know, when they used to teach in the colleges, you know, they have this campus interview. First round of interview when he goes, he goes with such confidence. Four rounds of interviews he is not selected. What happens to him, sir? After that. Fifth round when he goes for interview, he is finished. He goes, so why? Because last time I failed, this time I should not. Last time I failed, this time I failed, last time I failed, this time. That thought destroys his ability to perform action. All the skill that he has is not available to him when he goes there. Why? Because of the past. Past memories bring brought into the present destroys your focus and your own skill is not available to you to perform the action. Wastage one. Second one is anxiety for future. That all of us can understand very easy that is. Nervous 90 they say in the you know in the, in cricket match. Theoretically speaking there is no reason for a batsman to get out in 90s. Theoretically. You ask all the all the cricketers, they say in 90s it's not possible. Why? 
because he has got used to the footwork because 90 runs he had scored means he has got his footwork and over a period of time the cricket ball will start looking like a football to you now how can you miss a football hmm? but still what had happened sir even the god of cricket 17 times he has missed the century why 90s you know the moment they come to 90s something happens to all those people why sir the mind has switched over to century 100 will i get it will i get it will i get it will i get it that anxiety to get the result destroys second one he says plug that third one is excitement of the present the sheer fact that Ronaldo, Brazil fellow, what happened to him in the finals? Till date, it's a mystery because he could not receive the pass appropriately. The finals, you see, that FIFA, it's almost impossible to believe. How can Ronaldo play like that? He's playing like me. Say, so why? The sheer fact that they are in the FIFA finals, oh my God, such an excitement. You get excited in the present action that you are performing, you lose your energy. So your mental faculties, your, your thought energy, your physical energy, all that is wasted because of these three leakage points. Worries of the past, anxiety for the future, excitement in the present. Krishna says, Karma Yoga technique, first principle of Karma Yoga technique is to plug in the leakage. How do you plug in love? You will see next. Now, I am only talking about the, the principle first. This is the principle now. Then comes the thing. What is that you have to do, sir? He says, at the level of intellect, conceive a higher ideal. At the level of mind, let the mind surrender to the idol and let the body act dynamically. That's what he means by Yudhyasva. Yudhyasva means fight. Fight means doesn't mean all of us start fighting. You see, that's not Krishna's effort. He says, because he is talking to Arjuna, he said fight. If you were to be talking to a person who is, you know, studying, he will say study. If he, if he has to be talking about a person who is playing sports, he will say play. Now, there it is Arjuna. The situation is that therefore he uses the word, you just fight. Dynamically act. More and more you use your body, your body is designed to be alert and alive. You see, over a period of time, we stop using the body. That's why you age. Why you age so badly? Because you stopped using the set of muscles. Whatever set of muscles you are not been using slowly loses its vitality and dies. Keep using it. Keep using it. More you use, better it gets. Better it gets. Better it gets. Dynamically act at the physical level. At the mental level, what you have to do? Surrender to the higher ideal. Don't keep resisting the higher ideal. Don't keep, you know, saying, what will happen to me? What is the point of doing all this? That nothing of that sort. That's ideal conceived by your own intellect. It is not told by somebody. It is your intellect that is conceived and fixes that is my goal. Pitch up the goal of self-realization and let the mind surrender to the goal of realization and physically be dynamic. When you practice these six points together, that is the technique of Karma Yoga. How does this Karma Yoga work, sir? Remember, anything gets keep kept alive only by feeding. If you have to survive, you have to feed. 
anything that is not fit gets weaker and weaker weaker and dies same rule is applied here when you are performing your actions propelled by your desires directly the actions are feeding the desire thus your desires are kept alive and becomes more stronger and stronger and stronger day by day now when you pitch up a higher ideal beyond your current realm of desires when you pitch up that ideal and work what happens is you are not performing actions propelled by the desire now you are performing actions inspired by the ideal what is getting fed every time when you are performing action where is your focus your focus is on the ideal your focus is not on the desires thereby the desires don't get a feeder since your desires are not getting the feeder it gets weaker and weaker and weaker thus your mind gets purified purified means it is rid of all this desires so the mark of karma yoga is what sir is the purification of the mind mind gets purified through the performance of karma yoga then bring in the light this is the second step your the house the room that you are wanting to shift in is dark and dirty what do you have to do sir you got to clean and then bring in light both you have to do clean that room also bring in light uh, you can't say i'll bring only light not enough you can't say i'll only do the cleaning not enough you have to do both in that karma yoga principle for an extroverted personality now you people have to hear every word of what i have said it needs an explanation please karma yoga is designed for a person who is extroverted in nature meaning who has lot of desires the desires are forcing him to perform more actions therefore he has to use karma yoga principle when you drop the bulk of such desires your mind is no longer infested with the desires it is pure it's relatively calm then you start pursuing the knowledge then comes the second phase of the spiritual pursuit as what krishna gives in the gita this is the the path he gives loke smin vivida nishta pra prokta mayanak jnana yogena sankhyanam karma yogena yogina for the sankhyas i have given jnana yoga for the yogis i have given karma yoga so practice jnana yoga if you are an introverted person practice karma yoga if you are an extroverted what is the difference between extroverted introverted sir extroverted means the one who has more desires extroverted the one who has less desires relatively speaking is called an introverted person so his method is different your method is different the principle is this anything fed survives in karma yoga you are not acting on your desires you are acting on the ideal therefore your ideal your conviction keeps building your desires are not fed therefore it withers away it drops and the principle the practice of karma yoga has six fold methods let the intellect conceive the higher ideal mind surrender to the higher ideal physically be dynamic and plug in this three unproductive channels through which you are wasting your energy worries of the past anxiety with reference to the future 
and excitement over the present. Thank you.